Good morning. Through this video, I am addressing the youth of Kerala and beyond that the youth of India in light of the very meaningful and inspiring life that the late Umman Chandi led, which <clears throat> has attracted quite rightly the admiration of the people of Kerala as a whole. <clears throat> I believe that um, the youth of Kerala can learn something of great value <clears throat> from the life of Sri Manchandi. And these insights are sure to be missed or neglected because of our preoccupation with the sentimental aspects of the demise and the last rites of a life so significantly lived. In my experience, uh, sentimentality often proves counterproductive because it inhibits uh, sensible, rational thinking and the derivation of insights of lasting significance. To that extent, the life of a leader like Sri Uman Chandi could be wasted uh, because of our incapacity to di distill the wisdom of a life like his. <clears throat> That's the consideration or the concern that underlies this video. And as, as I said a short while ago, this is addressed particularly to the youth, though uh, the insights that I am going to share will be of interest to uh, individuals in every age group. <clears throat> as I reflect on the life of uh, Sri Umman Chandi, particularly in light of the unmatched popular response, <clears throat> The volcanic eruption of public sentiments in the context of his death, though he died after a prolonged a period of prolonged illness. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, surely it means that Numan Chandi's life has touched a chord in the hearts of everyone. Uh, belonging to the entire spectrum of Kerala's life, Kerala society. So it's very worthwhile to ask the question, what was it that constituted the power of that personality, the charisma of uh, Sri Umman Chandi? And that's a question that I've been meditating on since the day of his death, also the time of the protracted uh, burial rites. And right up to this moment, and this morning I woke up at about 2 a.m. with these insights which I cannot withhold from you, hence this video. <clears throat> the very first insight that I am deeply uh, convinced that young people can benefit from and benefit enormously from the life of uh, Mr. Chandi is that... Um, the blessedness of life consists in developing to the uttermost whatever talents life has entrusted to us. Now, when I use the word life in this particular context, I also mean if you are religious, God. If you believe that uh, God is the fountain, fountain spring of life, and our life upon this earth is willed by God and we are placed by God on planet earth with special purposes, then <coughs> uh, I should put it in that uh, format. Now, if you really think of Uman Chandi, he's not a very dramatic character. He's, he doesn't strike you as a rare genius. He doesn't strike you as a powerful character like Sri Narendra Modi. He doesn't actually look particularly distinguished. 
and perhaps and that's the paradox of being an umman chandi his extraordinariness was woven out of the very ordinary life that he lived <clears throat> he became <clears throat> part and parcel of the life in kerala he became uh, close to the hearts of uh, tens and thousands of people not because he impressed them with this <clears throat> unattainable personal majesty or power but because he was one with them and that was the special talent god gave to him to be a people's man a man who can understand others in their predicament and attain a state of oneness with them a people's leader in the true sense of the word that was a gift given to him he did not seek to impress as our present prime minister does he tries to be one with the people he tries to be in a state of practical and meaningful solidarity with the plight of every individual now i have to tell you that this is a very very difficult thing to do it's an energy zapping uh and our people don't realize what it takes to be in this kind of engagement with people from different walks of life 24/7 i used to be astonished at the inexhaustible fund of energy that this man had in responding to the needs of anyone and everyone when i was a principal in stephen's college a young colleague of mine his name is mr k m matthew he died of cancer at the age of 53 women chandi didn't have much to do with him but he happened to be in delhi and he visited college to pay his respects to my dead colleague i'm just citing one instance uh and it is this capacity it doesn't look a very flamboyant gift but it is a very very valuable gift now therefore the insight that i derived from the life of sri imman chandi is that the real value of a gift is not in its inherent flamboyant or dramatic nature the power of a talent lies in the extent to which it is developed no matter how simple and common place it looks an illustration that comes to my mind in this context is that mother teresa i met met with the mother in a fairly extended interaction in 1994 in the mother house in Cal- calcutta in those days this calcutta and kolkata and i asked mother teresa i asked her what is your theology what is the theology that underlies your work your mission she laughed in a very gentle manner she said i have no theology i have no philosophy i know only one thing jesus is in solidarity with those who suffer and therefore to be with jesus the best means is to be with those who suffer i know nothing else now that insight is with all of us but we don't use it we don't explore it to the ultimate extent we don't put it to practice and therefore we never experience the power of this very simple insight so the gift that god gave to sri uman chanti or if you don't want religious language the gift the life and trust it to sri uman chanti was the gift of being with the people or being in solidarity with the people or if you want a less uh, pedantic word being one with the people uh, something that something similar to what jesus said abide in me and i in you if there is one political leader in the history of kerala that i know somewhat clearly who could say in relation to the people abide in me and i in you 
it is a umman chanti therefore his life the tremendous charismatic power his life contained which remained hidden until the time of his death is interestingly a contemporary historical illustration of the power of Jesus' teaching or Jesus' self-revelation or Jesus' definition of the kind of relationship he wants to maintain with the people. Abide in me and I in you. That's precisely what Sri Umanchanti attempted to do in his own ways. And I'm glad to say that he succeeded tremendously in this and that accounts to, a, to no small measure the incredible, the pleasantly surprising extent of popularity he commanded and the profound sympathies that his death activated to which all of us have been witnesses in the last two or three days. So, therefore, the first principle that the youth may learn from the life of Sri Manjandi, develop whatever gifts life has entrusted to you. Surely, 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 there is none in this world without a gift. Unfortunately, the problem is we have a worldly idea of the hierarchy of gifts. That is to say, we assume that certain gifts are very valuable, certain gifts are not very valuable. You know, among the disciples of Jesus Christ, there was someone called Barnabas. What was this gift? This gift was only the gift of encouraging people, encouraging people. There was someone called Philip. What was his gift? He had only one gift. That was a gift of leading people or taking people to Jesus Christ, nothing else. He was virtually a postman for the people. See, if a uh, government appointed postman does uh, uh, take letter from uh, the post office to the people, Philip took people to Jesus Christ. He was the postman. That was his gift, which was a tremendous thing. Tremendous thing. So if, if Philip did not have the gift, the miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 people out of the small food packet a boy carried would not have happened. It's as simple as that. So this is the first principle. There's a great deal to be said about it, but then if I go on dwelling upon it, time will get out of control. Now, let me move to the second important insight. And that is to say, Umman Chanti realized, to an extent I never realized. In fact, this idea became clear to me only through the death of Sri Umman Chanti. That's the reason why I attach very special significance to the insight that I'm going to share with you. Umman Chandi realized, to an extent I could never realize, unfortunately, that antagonism has an important role to play in public life. Most of us assume, and I'm also guilty of that, most of us assume that public life must be compacted of uh, peace and quietude. But if you look at history, history hasn't progressed through peace, unfortunately. And there was a time, you know, when I read Immanuel Kant uh, and, and, and Hegel, both of them agree that war is a must. War is a necessary catalyst for human progress. When I read this years ago, I was angry with that statement. But today I can understand the practical sense in which they wrote it. Now, let me highlight the context in which this particular insight became very clear to me. And that's the kind of antagonism that Sri Manchandi faced from his own church, which he loved most sincerely and deeply, the Orthodox, Syrian Orthodox Church. I cannot think of anyone in the history of Christianity in Kerala who has been abused, insulted, humiliated, indeed threatened to the extent she Ummanchandi was by his own church and that too in Pudupalli. Uh, 
some of the videos are still available on the YouTube. I advise you to see and see for yourself. Anyone in his place, I, if I were in his place, I would have cut off myself completely from the church. Uman Chandi did not do it. He stayed engaged with the church. But that is not the whole thing. He could have stayed engaged with the church like an animal being tied to the tree and being beaten every day, condemned to endure this humiliation without resistance. That's not what he did. He stayed engaged with the church, but at the same time not deviating from his personal conviction and the larger vision that he had, which the church could not understand or appreciate. In one of my uh, videos published earlier, I said that the problem with all organized religion is that they become so completely obsessed with their own interests then they become blind to the big picture and the larger interest. And therefore, they tend to see parochial interest in complete antagonism to the larger interest. And this is spiritually indefensible. I still affirm the same principle. Now, to the credit of Sri Manchandi, it must be said that he suffered that humiliation and he accepted the principle of antagonism as a healthy thing, therefore did not allow the parochial antagonism towards him to become a stumbling block in his life or to become a catalyst for alienation in his personality. He transcended it. He continued to pursue the path of righteousness and refused to take the side of the church in robbing a sister church, a Jacobite church, of its churches and properties, which would have been an act of indefensible, unthinkable atrocity. He refused to commit that atrocity, in spite of tremendous pressures, stayed true and faithful to his conviction, without at the same time diluting his sense of loyalty to his mother church. And that, I believe, is a sign of greatness. Now, I didn't have this clarity. I'm now 73 years old. I did not have this clarity till the death of Dr. Sri Uman Chandi. And therefore, I have to say that Uman Chandi has done a greater service to me through his death than through his life. Because even though he practiced it through his life, the significance of this, this remained fairly hidden from my sight. And it's his death that sort of accentuated my thinking and literally forced me, dragged me into the realization of this very profound and vital principle. Now, let me contrast him with another uh, political person whom I personally admire, Sri P. T. Thomas. Peter Thomas took a, a different route. He allowed himself to be alienated from the church for very good reasons. If you apply ordinary human standards or normal human standards, you cannot fault Peter Thomas. Because if your church organized your funerals, not once, but several times, while you are still alive, you are sure to be offended. The church says, as far as we are concerned, you are dead. You are a corpse. We want to get rid of you out of our sight at once. So, Peter Thomas said, thank you. And he looked at the wider world and developed an alternate sense of belonging. And it was for this reason that he willed that his body should not be buried according to the Christian rites and that it should be cremated. And to the accompaniment of a song that was dear to his heart, E Manohara Thirath Therimo Ini Origen Mangode, will I be pleased given at another birth on this beautiful land that's after my heart? To such an emotional, 
moving uh, spectacle. But the death of Sri P.T. Thomas did not activate in me these thoughts. I am not counterpointing Sri Chandi against P.T. Thomas or pitting P.T. Thomas against Sri Chandi. That is not my point. I value the life of both of them. In fact, I find the life and work, the personality of P.T. Thomas very inspiring. But today, if I were to choose between the two, I would rather choose the role model of Sri Umman Chandi, even as I would never let go on and I'll continue to admire the life of P.T. Thomas. So, my dear young friends, consider these two thoughts that have come to me through the death of Sri Umman Chandi. After all, he began as a youth leader. In fact, I began to know him uh, when I was in school as a youth leader. He was um, the president of the uh, uh, Kerala Students' Union. And then from there, he of course graduated him uh, into uh, politics. So, <clears throat> the youth can derive at least two profoundly relevant <clears throat> insights from the life and death of Sri Umman Chandi. And I am particularly keen that these insights are not lost sight of, because they can be of immense value and therefore, I am sharing these thoughts with you in a spirit of gratitude to the departed soul and out of love for the living. Both together constitute the complete picture of this video. Gratitude to the departed, love for the living. And that is the substance of this video, which I commend in much affection for the youth of India now and ever. Thank you.